All right, thrombogenesis, or the formation of an insoluble fibrin mesh. We'll cover this process from beginning to end and mention several different drugs and diseases that will also be mentioned in the pathology and pharmacology sections. The goal here is to create a great review video. Once you've finished all these sections, hopefully you can come back here to review the whole process in its entirety. All right, so we have our normal blood vessel here with our red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets flowing through them, minding their own business. Then out of nowhere, an evil piece of paper cuts you. This starts off our whole process, resulting in injury to the endothelium, and this causes a transient vasoconstriction of the blood vessel. During this process, subendothelial collagen is exposed, and von Willebrand refractor is released from Webel Pilate bodies of the endothelial cells, as well as alpha granules of local platelets. Originally, when this von Willebrand refractor is released, it is released as a large multimer. So what if after injury, there was no release of von Willebrand refractor? Do you know what disease this would be? Great, this would be von Willebrand deficiency. And what would this present like? Great, platelet bleeding disorder with a normal platelet count. So now, after release of all the large von Willebrand multimers, they are cleaved into von Willebrand factor monomers. This is done by ADOMPS-13, which is a von Willebrand factor metalloprotease. Now what disease would it be if you had decreased or deficient ADOMPS-13? Great, that'd be TTP. And do you remember the pin tad for TTP? There you go. It's fever, low platelets, CNS and renal symptoms, as well as hemolysis. So how would you treat TTP? Good job. Plasmapheresis or plasma exchange and steroids. So now our von Willebrand factor monomers are going to go bind our subendothelial collagen. Surrounding platelets will then come by and bind to our von Willebrand factor. And they do this by the glycoprotein 1B receptor. This binding leads to activation of intracellular pathways, which lead to the release of ADP, calcium, and thromboxane A2. So what if glycoprotein 1B were deficient? What disease would this be? There you go, Bernard Soule syndrome. And what medicine would lead to decreased thromboxane A2 levels? Great, that'd be aspirin, which inhibits the COX enzyme. Thromboxane's main action in this process is to increase platelet aggregation and decrease blood flow to the area to help form the platelet plug. So now that ADP has been released, it will bind to the P2Y12 receptor on the platelet itself. This will result in expression of the glycoprotein 2B3A receptor, as you can see here. So can you name a few drugs that block this P2Y12 receptor? Great, that's clopidogrel, pasigrel, and ticopidine. So now we have our glycoprotein 2B3A receptor on the surface of platelets. It will bind to fibrinogen, which will also bind to other glycoprotein 2B3A receptors on other platelets, cross-linking them. So what if we were to have a defect in the glycoprotein 2B3A receptor? What disease would this be? There you go, Glanzmann's thrombocenia. And what if we were to form autoantibodies to our glycoprotein 2B3A receptor? What disease would this be? Great, that'd be ITP. And can you name a few drugs that inhibit the glycoprotein 2B3A receptor? You've got it. Epsiximab, eptifibotide, and tyrofiban. Another important point to note is during this entire process, fibrin from our coagulation cascade is cross-linking to form the fibrin meshwork which along with the platelet plug, will work to stop bleeding. It's also good to remember that during this whole process, there are anti-aggregation factors which are working to prevent the clot from overriding the whole vessel. This is done by local vascular endothelial cells, which release prostaglandin I2 and nitric oxide, which decrease platelet aggregation and increase blood flow to the area. All right, well that's gonna wrap up thrombogenesis. Pretty crazy, all that big to do for a stupid paper cut. All right, so let's try a USMLE style question. A 60-year-old man with a history of multiple myeloma is 40 days status post allogenic stem cell transplant. Due to graft versus host disease, he has been hospitalized on levofloxacin since transplant. During an intravenous exchange, his nurse notes that his venous access site is oozing blood. Laboratory tests reveal a prolonged prothrombin time, partial thromboplastin time, 
and a normal platelet count. A deficiency in which of the following would most likely cause this patient's abnormal laboratory test? Would it be factor 2, factor 5, von Willebrand factor, glycoprotein 1b, or factor 8? We'll give you a minute here to think. Great. Well, the answer here would be factor 2. Here we see our patient is on long-term, broad-spectrum antibiotics. This type of therapy can induce a vitamin K deficiency by clearing the intestinal flora, which we are dependent upon for vitamin K synthesis. Vitamin K is required for the activation of factors 2, 7, 9, 10, as well as protein C and protein S. This action alone will lead to our factor 2 deficiency and lead to the prolonged PT and PTT. To review our other answers, we have factor 5, which isn't a vitamin K dependent factor, so this eliminates this answer choice. We also have von Willebrand factor, which a deficiency in this would be von Willebrand's disease, which does present with bleeding and a normal platelet count, but it wouldn't affect the PT and PTT. Along this same process, we have glycoprotein 1b, and a deficiency in glycoprotein 1b would be bernard soulier syndrome. This would also lead to bleeding with a normal platelet count, but it shouldn't affect the PT and PTT. We also have factor 8, or hemophilia A, which would present with delayed deep bleeding, but would not prolong the PT. All right, well that's gonna wrap up this video in this section. If you liked the video, give us a big thumbs up below. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please let us know. We're always looking for ways to improve. Well, this is Dan Griffin signing off. See you in the next video.